I have in my hand right here the brand new Sony A7 S3, and I am so excited. That is a complete lie. This is a Sony A6400. The A7 S3 is on right now recording. I've just been so excited to actually get some footage. If you have something to start playing with. So in this video, I wanna talk about three things. Well, actually two things. Number one, why did I go about buying this camera? Then the second main topic I wanna to get into is two things I wish I had known before I bought it. First thing, why did I buy a almost $4,000 camera in the year where there are literally dozens of high grade, mid-level, near cinema level cameras, and then all the way down to all the other do crop sensors, mirrorless, everything that's coming out nowadays. Why did I buy this one? Um, and considering I even just bought an A6400 not three months ago. Um, the reason I bought the Sony A7S III is multifold, 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 multi-reason, multifaceted. I first got into doing video uh, as an offshoot of photography and was just using the Nikons I have. They got the job done, they worked enough. But then I started renting cameras and the first video camera I actually rented was a so Sony A7S II. And that was nearly five years ago. Um, and I remember just being blown away by just how easy it was to use. And then the quality that came out of it was so much higher. So as I started making a little more money and also doing a lot more video work, I realized I needed a Sony video system that I was just gonna really rely on. Um, but when I started kind of reading into things, everyone said the so Sony A7S II is the best, but it's already getting old and we're all waiting for the Sony A7S III. That was probably four years ago that I was looking at that. And everyone said within six months, we're going to get the new camera. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just wait a little bit. And in that waiting time, I believe that's right around when the A6500 came out. So I bought one of those. I don't know, I don't know where it is. We'll pretend it's this because this looks exactly the same as the A6500. And I started using that and I was able to, for what, like a thousand bucks, be able to get an incredible video camera. Um, it did all of the things I needed it to do. Um, you know, no client ever realized I wasn't using a full frame camera or using a crop sensor or using what was realistically a thousand dollar camera to deliver really high quality results. And the A6500 was not without its uh, shortcomings. Biggest one being as much as it had 4K, you couldn't count on it. That if you started shooting 4K too long, it overheated and then there was no coming back. So you couldn't start a project in 4K and know that it might take a few hours and know that you could finish it in 4K. So that was a problem. But the camera worked great and I just kept waiting. And then another year went by, still no A7S II, A7S III kept going kept going that that pattern and eventually time kind of caught up and i now need to deliver projects in 4k and long projects in 4k so i can't mess around with that the record limit so i finally got caved bought an a6400 which is again really cheap and can do awesome video work but it was not the mythical full frame camera we've all been waiting for um, so i still was making do with this and then finally a7S III is announced within like a minute of it being announced. I didn't even wait for the specs. I pre-ordered on B&H. Um, and with that, had it the day after it was finally started shipping. So that worked out for me. But why did I just single-mindedly know that this was the camera as opposed to like one of the Canon R5s, one of their cinema line cameras, or even like go nuts and get like a Komodo or something like that. Um, and the reason is this, the, the Sony's, as I've worked with them and I've also worked with Canon's and some of the other cameras and Nikon's, um, they just work the best and the smoothest for doing the sorts of stuff I need to do without really having to put too much extra work into things. The autofocus just works. The sound is very easy just to put right into the camera and I get nice clean sound. I can mount it on the Ronin like I have right now and run around all day with it and I'm not breaking my shoulder. Um, that had that versatility. And then, especially with the A6500, A6400, and now these full frame cameras, there's so many options in terms of picture profile and what kind of image you can get out of it that when I wanna be fancy and start actually 
doing more complicated grades or working in like a log format, I have so many options. So like this video, I'm playing around with uh, HLG2 in Picture Profile 10, I believe it is. Um, and like I'm right next to a window here, so I get that really hard light coming in. Um, and you know, we'll see how that looks when I'm touching it up. Um, because I've done very similar shots with the A6500 and it really doesn't hold up as well when you're using kind of those log formats. Um, but so really these Sony cameras have just worked so flawlessly and I've not had any of the issues or challenges I've had with the other systems. Uh, so it's really was kind of a no brainer decision for me to buy this. Um, and then especially they made it that much easier, especially with the price point they put it at. And then all of the features, there's literally, there's, there's not a single thing in this camera that I see as a trade-off. It's not like, oh, but I wish it had that also. It, it literally has all of those things. And even taking it out of the box and starting to play around with it, being surprised by more things that I was finding. Like, I, I, somewhere in my head, it must have just glossed over it, but it has a full-size HDMI jack. Like, that's one of those little things that... I'm just so used to having to always adapt with a mini USB, a mini HDMI or a micro HDMI that having that full size HDMI jack is just amazing. It's just so nice. Um, and the more and more I'm digging into the settings and finding things that I didn't even realize I wanted, but I'm so happy that it has, uh, I'm, just, I'm just thrilled. Um, so very simple reason why I knew this was kind of the camera for me. It's just exactly what I've been looking for and it's already within the kind of ecosystem that I've been working in and so comfortable with. Um, but let's get to the two things that I really wish I had known before I clicked the order button on this. Uh, the first one and sort of minor is as I was planning on kind of transitioning now into full frame, I didn't want to have to spend three grand or whatever it is on the camera and then now have to buy a whole new line of lenses. I was hoping to be able to get some mileage out of all the crop sensor lenses I have. Uh, like I very recently, not very recently, maybe six months ago, bought the uh, G series 16 to 55 to eight, which is a great lens on these crop bodies. Um, and I have a couple others. I was really hoping I would still be able to put these E-mount lenses on the full frame camera and get some distance out of them before I then had to pull the trigger and buy a couple new lenses. But the way the lenses, these cropped lenses work on the full frame camera, uh, they are going to put not just a crop into the lens, they're gonna vignette if you use any of the 4K settings, at least in my experience. Uh, the only way you can use the crop lenses on the full frame camera is to use it in its full HD settings. So you can still do full HD, 1080, uh, up until 120 frames a second, but you cannot use any of the 4K settings, even 4K at 24 frames a second. So that's a bummer and basically it was like a deal breaker that I just had to, the same day the camera got here, make sure I'm buying a new lens. So that wasn't too hard. Uh, Who is Matt had a great video and also actually just talked to me in the comments, which was super nice. Um, and I just landed on the Sigma uh, 24 to 70 2 8 for the e-mount and because it's now been out for like six months There was no backlog or back order I was able to get that I got that even before the camera showed up um, And that just you know, this is literally the first time I'm using it So I assume it looks great, but so far in operation. It's been flawless uh, So that was the first thing was just not being able to use any of those old lenses in any real way Like maybe it's a very very minor stopgap I could use them, but they're basically all paperweights unless I'm working with my uh, older camera body still. The other one, and I think this is actually a much bigger deal, is it's very cool that there's two card slots on the camera, and it's very cool that they're going to be future-proofing the camera with this CF Express Type A card. But what I didn't realize, just because I was so quick, so quick to hit that order button, was I actually got one of these order bundles that had one of the CF Express Type A cards bundled in it for the low price of $400. Uh, and I assumed to get really any of the 4K settings and especially the 4K at the higher bit rate, you would just of course need that CF Express card to write to it and the SD cards would just be trash. Um, that is incorrect. Uh, you can record everything, again, who is Matt has a great video on this, 
um, but you can record everything of like 20 different formats on a regular SD card except for one that requires that CF Express Type A. So I very quickly have canceled the CF Express card and said they can keep that. But instead, uh, do I have ordered special SD cards. So not all SD cards will work on this camera for all formats. Uh, like I have a whole bunch of our, you know, SanDisk. Oh, let's see if that wants to pick up on the focus. Yeah, there it is. I have a whole bunch of these SanDisk uh, extremes. And there's that little thing up there that says V30. The V30 will not cut it if you go into the 4K at I believe both the 60 and 120 settings. But this card is in this camera right now shooting 4K at uh, 422 10 bit. So these are, it's not that these cards are like cheap, but they are able to do almost everything I'd ever need this camera to do. And with all that money I'm saving on not getting CF Express Type A card and the reader and a second card, I'm buying uh, three or four of the SD cards that have the transfer speeds, the write speeds that you need to get absolutely everything out of this so I can get that 4K 120. Um, so the two things I wish I had known before is that there was no using these crop lenses on this camera and then just understanding the memory cards. I just assumed I would need those faster memory cards, but in fact I didn't and actually get to save quite a bit of money and wait until those cards become more of an uh, accepted standard uh, and just keep cashing in buying more and more SD cards and faster ones that'll also work on all my other cameras. So pretty cool. So, well, that took, those are 12 minutes. Psyched to be having the camera, looking to be taking a lot of you know, fancy cinematic shots. Uh, really enjoying it so far and I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, so remember, like, comment, subscribe, do that stuff. I'll see you.